Welcome one and all to episode 14 of Let's Play Planet Coaster here on Theme Park Worldwide. Of course, we are starting to come towards the end of the series for this vintage park. Uh, there's going to be two more episodes uh, and I'll explain a bit more about that later on. Oh, but firstly, let me just apologise about it being over a week and a half since I last uploaded an episode of Let's Play Planet Coaster. Uh, that's mainly because there's been so much going on over the past week and a half. Honestly, we've filmed so many new videos uh, for the channel. You might have already seen them. Uh, we had an exclusive invite up to Alton Towers to go and preview uh, the new Alton Towers dungeon. We also had a look around the stargazing pods to check both of those videos out. Uh, along with that, we had the vlogs from Legoland Windsor from the annual past day. Uh, same from Chessington. We also had videos there from the new attraction, uh, Room on the Broom. So yeah, there's been loads and loads of stuff going on. And uh, yeah, it's been like very crazy. Been down London doing bits. Uh, and of course, uh, up at Alton Towers and stuff, you know, so there's been a lot going on, uh, so I've not had as much time to play Planet Coaster as I would have liked to, uh, but of course there's been lots of other content coming on, so hopefully that's more than made up for it, uh, especially having that cheeky look inside the uh, dungeon there, a big thanks to the guys at Alton Towers for uh, inviting us up there to check it out, and uh, like I say it's well worth watching it, there is spoilers in there, but uh, make sure you check it out if you've not already seen it, but uh, yeah, of course I've also launched the new weekly series now, the Theme Park News Show that's every Friday at 5 on Theme Park Worldwide, so make sure you check it out. Of course, it went online yesterday, and uh, yeah, like normally, you know, I might have put a Planet Coaster video on that day, but now we've got the weekly show back. Obviously, Fridays uh, are dedicated to that video, but uh, there you go. That doesn't mean, you know, it's going to be slowing down uh, that much. It's only, you know, one week you know, where, where we have not uh, committed and brought an episode out within the week, but don't worry. Uh, you know, there'll be the rest of this series is going to be coming on in the next uh, sort of week and a half I would say and we'll have this series and this park wrapped up and moving on to the shopping mall park which is going to be uh, around four episodes a mini series before moving on to my next big project but uh, yeah here we go then so you've got a bit of an explanation about what's been going on theme park worldwide you can see here I've started work on a racing wooden coaster and uh, yeah I'm really looking forward to building this because I've never actually done a racing coaster uh, in Planet Coaster uh, not publicly anyway I've, I've had a little mess about with a I did a steel launched racing coaster actually in one of my parks that I've got away from uh, YouTube what I just work on every so often and uh, yeah you know that came together quite nice and I thought well let's try something a, a wooden racing coaster well let's start it a little bit different in terms of let's have a drop what goes right underneath the footpath and then it's going to come up the other side uh, you know a little double up and then up into the uh, into the lift hill so that's what I've just built here and you can see I've uh, done a lot of messing about with the landscaping to get this right and uh, carry on doing that now in terms of uh, putting all the walls in uh, and stuff around the side um, and bring that land around for the tunnels you know and obviously when it gets landscaped around here in the next episode uh, you'll see that all come together uh, a lot better but uh, yeah here you go so obviously I've done quite a lot of racing coasters out there Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach that's a wooden racing coaster of course Stampeda at Port Aventura that's one that you know I really enjoyed when I first went on it then they changed the trains and it got a bit rough well very rough and then now it's still got them trains that I wish they would replace but they've done quite a lot of track refurbishment so it's actually a lot smoother now uh, Stampeda at Port Aventura and of course if you've never seen our vlogs from there it's one of my most visited parks in Europe so make sure you uh, check out the vlogs here on theme park worldwide from that but uh, yeah that's sort of what we're going for here it's not going to be a very long coaster this um, we're talking sort of you know wicker man style in terms of yes there's going to be two tracks but it's going to be quite short it's the, the main element of this is the fact that you know it, it's going to be a racing coaster uh, but it's not going to be you know the track isn't going to stay next to each other throughout the whole thing in fact one of the sides is going to go through uh, helix elements whereas the other side is going to have like a double down uh, instead but they're both going to have a double down at the start but uh, yeah as we're building it and of course once you've seen them at the end I'll be sharing a, a POV of them in this episode without the landscaping and theming uh, and then in the next episode, of course, I'll share a new POV uh, with, with all the theming and landscaping completed around. Um, this isn't going to be that much of a heavily themed ride, um, much like what we've done in the past couple of episodes. Obviously, we had the uh, Chinese style area that was quite heavily themed for an amusement park. We also uh, have just done that Wild West area with the bobsleigh and, of course, the log flume. I'm going to be naming those and naming the rides on the pier uh, in a few minutes as well. So stay tuned for that. Um, but yeah, this is going 
going to be very back to basics, a bit like the start of the series. I mean, you look at uh, Schlitten Dips just next to it there on the right hand side, uh, the side friction. And uh, yeah, you know, they were talking that sort of style, a bit of a theme station and then mostly just trees and, and rocks and stuff around it, the side, like minimal uh, theming. Obviously, to build the dueling coaster like this, you've got to put a lot more thought into it because you, you want it to be quite a fair race in terms of you want some moments where, oh, you know, th this train could win, the other one could win. Obviously, with us being in Planet Coaster, you know, it, 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 we can't control, like, each one, you know, can't race and, and, and be different each time for the result. Uh, it does mean that, obviously, one's always going to be the winner. Uh, but obviously, if this was a real-life ride, it'd depend very much on the weight in the train, um, weather conditions, you know, all that sort of stuff, whether the track's wet or whether the track's hot, uh, that, that'd impact it. But, uh, yeah, so obviously with this, yeah, one of them is always going to win. But if we're pretending it's a real park, obviously, you know, there would actually be a race going on but you can see they make the way out the lift deal there one of the trains is slightly a bit further ahead um, you know it, it's quite hard to get it absolutely perfect but this first part of the layout is going to be very similar with the uh, airtime hill just here that we're going to go into quite a bit of speed it'll go up into that and um, both sides uh, both the blue which is the right hand side track and the red which is the left hand side track will have the same first couple of elements here so they do a turn uh, and then round the corner it makes its way down a drop up into this airtime hill and then a double down as you can see i'm just putting in just there which crosses over the path nicely to where the rest of the coast is going to be built um, like I say in terms of uh, the, the size of this ride the length of the track it's not going to be that long at all obviously the lift hill is not really that tall it's quite a short lift hill for such a, a you know a, a big ride like this you look at it compared to the scenic railway lift which is much bigger you know more than twice the height um, than this one so yeah it is going to lose speed quite quickly but we are going to dig it down into the ground quite a bit as well and that'll all make sense a bit more when the, the landscaping's put in uh, around here. Uh, but yeah, in terms of theme, it's not really going to have a theme as such. It's going to be, like I say, very generic. Lots of them light archways and stuff around here. Um, you know, following the theme of some of the original buildings that are built, uh, well, 13 episodes ago, anyway, way back at the start of the series. Obviously, here we are, episode 14, then it's, uh, you know, we're wrapping up. Also, I'm not just going to be building this ride in this episode. It's a bit of a surprise for for you i'm actually going to be putting in three other rides later in the episode as well so stay tuned uh, for that one this is a big quite a big area going in here actually and uh, yeah more about that later so as you can see it makes its way round uh, and goes into that double down there on the uh, blue side then on the red side it's in a, going into a helix but this does change now the helix goes over the top there um, but there's a lot of development happens here you know you'll see actually I do change this quite a lot now and the helix they are so I'm, I'm, I'm digging down now in the ground and uh, yeah the helix is going to go underneath now just because it was losing speed quite quick at this point and um, you know I was starting to think maybe I should have built the lift a little bit taller but then I thought I don't want them to be too big I don't want this to be a long ride I want the main element of this is the fact you know you're in a race with the other train and with how the coast has been designed you can kind of see them in the distance and then they'll meet up at a point then split off again and then meet up at the, at the end sort of thing um, but the beautiful thing about Planet Coaster is the fact that we can synchronize the stations and that's how you can see the trains are both leaving uh, at the same time um, so yeah, we can actually synchronize the stations up nice and easy to do. You just uh, click a couple of uh, options and uh, yeah, it means the trains leave at the same time. See what I mean there? We're getting a good bit of race going on here now. Um, that helix obviously is the main element on that coaster, but here on the other side you get the uh, the double uh, the double dip. But so uh, yeah, it's coming together quite nicely actually, quite pleased with it. Uh, but anyway, I'll leave you over the next few minutes with a little bit of uh, theme park music. Then I'll come back to you and uh, yeah, let's talk about the, the layout once it's nearly complete and also have a little uh, ride on this thing.
So after lots of moving bits of track pieces and putting them back in again and then moving them, uh, I finally managed to complete the circuit. Uh, I decided to change quite a lot towards the end of the layout there. As you saw over the past few minutes, it was very much uh, moving little bits just to try and get that interaction a little bit better because uh, I felt like, you know, they weren't interacting quite as much as what I wanted to. But uh, yeah, like I say, quite a short ride this one. Favourite element, I really like how the track passes back under the other side actually to get back to the station. I think that's quite nice. And uh, yeah, as much as it is a short ride, uh, I think it'll be a good one. So let's find out, shall we? Let's uh, get on board. As you can see, I've just added some more trains to it. So that's it. Yeah, quite a nice bit of speed as we head down in that tunnel. There we are, the double up into the uh, into the lift hill just there. So of course we're riding on the left hand side first, on the red train. But we are climbing the lift hill. Get ready, put your hands in the air. Uh, like I said, I just didn't want this to be, you know, too long of a ride. I didn't want the lift, it was me, I didn't want the lift hill to be too big to be honest. I, uh, if I could have had some more out of the ride, I would have done, but like I say, it was losing speed quite a bit towards the end of the layout. Great view there, looking out towards the sea. Good speed down there, up into the airtime hill. In fact, double down. And to the right, not too much banking on this either. I didn't want to bank it too heavily. So we got down to the bottom here, where obviously we had to. And there we are. Back up, obviously, you get that view of the other train there on the left. Can't really see it with the front facing POV, but uh, yeah, that's a nice bit of interaction. Then we'll ride it. Uh, when I show you a POV uh, of it complete with the theme, we'll ride it at the back of the train so we can see um, the interaction with the other train, actually. And so there you go. Let's have a ride on the, uh, on the blue train then. There we are. Dipping down into the tunnel again. That same style double up into the lift hill. Carrying on up there, of course. Get them hands ready in the air. Hope you're sitting there at home. <laughs> Pretending you're on the coasters. What's going to be your first theme park visit of this year? Let me know down in the comments. I'd like to know. Or maybe you've already done it. Obviously, a lot more parks are opening up. Alton Towers next week. Can't wait for that. A week today. You're watching this at the time of upload. Here we go, nice speed and a great view of the park on this side. Down we go, so similar drop into the airtime hill, double down, and this time we bank off to the left, then round to the right, and up again, a little pop of airtime, and then make our way into another double down. That obviously replaces the uh, helix, what's on the other side. There's that interaction with the other train. Oh, I like that, I like that a lot. I like how the track's not directly next to each other. And up we go into the brake run. There you go. So like I say, we're talking like Wicker Man sort of length. It's, it's a short ride, but uh, you know, I'm pleased with it. I think it looks good. And of course, the area itself, there's a lot of work to be done. You can see here, I'm just sort of uh, playing about a bit with the landscape around there. And in a moment, you'll see I put the queue lines in uh, for it. But uh, yeah, overall, I hope you like it. I mean, I'm quite pleased with it. Yeah, it would have been nice if I could have made it a little bit longer, but like I said, I just didn't want two massive tower towering over lift hills, you know, I just wanted them to be a nice sort of height. And also, I didn't want to dig too much down into the ground, uh, especially what I've got planned, like, scenery-wise around here. Not really theming, but, you know, just, like, general landscaping and scenery in terms of bushes, rocks, and lots of, like, water, like, effects and stuff I'm thinking around this. But uh, there you go. Let me know your thoughts. What side do you prefer, red uh, or blue? Obviously, red being the left side, the first one, blue uh, being the right side, the second one. But, uh, yeah, I mentioned earlier on about putting in some more rides. So there you go. I'm actually going to build uh, the large carousel. Uh, I'll put the smaller one in, back when uh, the large one wasn't actually in the game. Uh, so I put that one in, then they released it, and I thought, I'm going to build the second carousel at some point. So here we go, the big carousel, the grand carousel's going in. Uh, and then along with that, I'm also going to build another flat ride, along with another wooden coaster. I'm going to build a junior coaster, uh, mainly because there isn't a junior coaster in the park. We're going to build a very small, short layout, junior coaster uh, right up next to this little plaza what I've just built there what's going to have water in the middle soon but uh, there you go so yeah well, we've got lots of rides going technically five rides I've built in this episode uh, none of it's been themed though until the next episode that's when all the landscaping will come together and uh, yeah that's all happening of course in episode uh, number 15 and then the final episode will be episode 16 uh, like I say where we're going to operate the park for a full episode get staff in again see how guests react a bit of on-ride footage 
from different rides uh, with people on and, and yeah I look forward to sharing that but uh, there you go let's talk about the names then over the past two episodes of course I've, I've built lots of different projects and let's go back to the pier and let's read out some of the names that I've chosen for the pier rides so uh, we've got the loop the plane style ride which we're going to call scenic swingsters so that's thanks to YouTube user Coaster Chal uh, the Zozo ride uh, we're calling Sidewinder and that's uh, thanks to the colossal coaster enthusiastic and the third ride is the Summerfield Sizzler I like that one uh, from Coasters 51 so uh, a big shout out to you three here on YouTube the Log Flume now a lot of people <laughs> when I was building the Log Flume like basically that week uh, the Thought Park announced the full removal of Logger's Leap and I'm not calling it Logger's Leap, you know, because I like to be a bit more original than that. But I saw this name that was suggested by YouTube user uh, Aaron Sab, and he said Logger's Creek. And I thought, you know what? That has got to be doing. It just rolls off the tongue nice, doesn't it? Uh, welcome to Logger's Creek. So we're going for it. There you go. Thanks for your suggestion there, Aaron. Uh, and then finally, the wooden bobsleigh. I'm really pleased with how this ride uh, turned out. And thanks for all your feedback on that. Of course, that was built in the last episode, episode 13, if you've not seen it. And uh, yeah, we're going for the name that was suggested by a YouTube user. I'm going to just have to read out the le uh, like the letters here uh, because it doesn't really make sense. I think it could be Nathan, but it's N-X-T-H-A underscore N R B L X. There you go. Uh, who suggested the name Flying Western with an awesome backstory. This backstory was just too good not to use, to be honest. Um, so here we go. The backstory to this ride. Uh, Flying Western, a mad cowboy inventor has had enough of his horse being too slow. He wants to make a quicker machine that can get him to places quicker and easier. He tries a lot of different things, like teleportation, but nothing seems to be working. He finally has an idea that shocks the people who live in his town. They start calling him mad and crazy. This doesn't bring him down. He carries on with his crazy idea, and after weeks of testing, making and creating, he finally completes his dream. He starts the engine, and to his amazement, he soars across the sky. He flies over his town and throws his hands in the sky and says, I'm flying western. I absolutely love that. So thank you very much. I think, is it Nathan? I think it could be Nathan. But yeah, there you go. Thank you very much uh, for coming up with that name. I absolutely love it. Flying Western. What a name. And uh, there you go. You've just seen, actually, I've just been putting the queue line and exits in um, for the wooden coasters that do need to be named. So uh, a name, a nice dueling name for these rides. Of course, it's just one ride. So one name for both. But maybe you've got a different side. I don't mind changing the color scheme, you know, to fit uh, your, your name for this what we're going for and, and maybe a few you know see theming suggestions like I said there's not going to be much theming around because I, I want it to be more basic in terms of lights and stuff but it's come up with a nice name for us I imagine it's going to look a bit like the scenic but I'm going to keep it brown instead of white but uh, there you go here's this other coaster what's going in like I said another junior uh, a junior coaster sorry another coaster for the park and this was just a bit of a last minute decision I thought you know what we need a junior coaster I've just put in another like planes flat ride for the kids we got a carousel. So class this really as the, as the kids area. Just a few rides here at the back behind the dueling coaster. And uh, yeah, like I'm shortening the station down there, making the train a bit shorter as well. It's only going to run one train. I want this to be a really old classic, a bit like um, Zipper Dipper, as it used to be known at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's now known as Blue Flyer. Not Blue Fire, Blue Flyer. And uh, <laughs> there you go. Don't get it confused with the Europa Park. And uh, yeah, that one's, uh, you know, a nice little ride. One train. That's what we're going with with this a very short ride for the kids one big drop few little turns airtime mill and then back round into the station but uh, there you go as you can see we're coming to the end of this episode two more to go on this park let me know your thoughts on the rides that I've built name suggestions for these five different rides that I've built and uh, yeah be a bit more creative with the carousel not just the grand carousel let's go something a bit more creative you guys are fantastic when it uh, comes to these different names and, and different themes for rides. So I look forward to seeing what you come up with. And I'll be back within a, uh, about four or five days with the next episode. And then, of course, leading up to the grand finale of this park. I'm Sean Sandbrook. Thanks for watching Theme Park Worldwide. And I'll see you in the next video.